Cavalier Wool Scourers is the largest wool scouring operation in the world. One of their plants, Hawke's Bay Wool Scour, is their largest processing arm in New Zealand. They've built a reputation for being innovative and environmentally conscientious. There's been a decline in volume scoured in New Zealand. Typically there was about a million bales scoured each year. Last year there was quite a dramatic drop and there was somewhere around 800, 809,000 bales scoured nationally. We think that the volume's consolidated and it's around 800 odd thousand for this year, which we're very pleased about of course. On a daily basis we produce around six completed container loads of wool which is about 150 to 160 tonne of greasy wool. It's somewhere around the annual wool clip of 32,000 sheep per day. We're averaging a bit over six tonne per hour, so it's quite a considerable amount of wool that we handle each day, and we run seven days a week. Yeah, g'day, how's it going? Yeah, how's this wool looking? Yeah, not too bad. It's all good? Yeah. We're forever trying to improve the quality of the scouring process, and we've been quite successful in doing that over the last 10 years or so. To a point now where New Zealand's scoured wool is of far superior quality to anything else scoured around the world. If we were to benchmark China, our scouring quality is a lot better. We know that we're a lot better than the Europeans as well, so we're trying to do our bit to make sure that wool that leaves New Zealand is in its best possible form. Obviously we don't own any wool ourselves, so we're just supplying a service. So we need to be as competitive as we possibly can. We think that we're very good at that, and I think we'd be one of the few companies that could actually say that they're actually competitive with Chinese processes. About 30% of our work now is put through the Environmental Choices Trust program. We're part of the license criteria for environmental choice. Uh, we're continually looking for opportunities with effluent disposal, whereas it was always a cost centre in the, in the past, we're now looking at it as an opportunity. The wool bales are opened over there, the guys sort the wool. This is a, a feed hopper and it's linked to a weigh belt, so everything's linked to a central computer system and the computer actually operates the blend and then the wool is, is fed through these openers and um, it teases the wool open and removes as much dirt as possible so that the wool becomes a lot easier to scour. We're trying to take out as much mineral material as we can before the wool actually hits the water. The wool grease will come out in the scouring process. It enters uh, the first hot scouring bowl, which is heated to a temperature of about 70 degrees. And then the second scouring bowl is 65 degrees and the third scouring bowl is 60 degrees. They work on a counter flow current. That's actually where all of our major energy components are, but it's also where we put detergent and take off the wool grease. From there it goes into rinse bowls where we, we polish up the, um, the wool with a cold rinse, and then it goes into a warm rinse in its last bowl or number six bowl uh, where we can add peroxide or acid. The wool has now been dried and we leave approximately 14-15% regain in it. Wool will actually absorb moisture in, so we have to leave some in. And this is an inspection point here, so that we bring both scours together so we can in inspect the wool before it's pressed. So as you'll see going up that conveyor, the wool is actually going to the, the final stage, which is pressing made some major changes, we've found all sorts of opportunity in our waste streams and we're continuing to focus on that. Wool grease for example, we're trying to extract as much wool grease out of the wool as we possibly can. That's a very valuable byproduct that goes to all sorts of further processing industries. One of the most well known is, um, is the Nivea cream, uh, that's highly laced with wool grease. Um, the other is, is cholesterol. Uh, vitamin D3 I think it is, um, which is fed to, to fish all through Asia. Um, for the shrimp farmers, uh, they couldn't do without uh, the derivative from, from wool grease actually. The wool grease is actually a very valuable part of our income stream. 
So we look after it and uh, refine it right down to just about pure wool grease. It has less than half a percent moisture in it actually. We'd certainly like to see a resurgence in, in wool and I think that's actually happening. There's some very, very good programs underway um, and I think there's been a lot of progress made in 18 months. That may not have yet turned into dollars for farmers and it may be, you know, they need to be a little bit more patient. Um, but, you know, things like the IWTO um, Architects Project, the Prince Charles Project and the various other projects that others are doing, um, I think will all be good for New Zealand strong wool in the future. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.